Hello, my little noodles. It's been a while. It's nice to see you all again. And hopefully in a different light. This time, finally doing the thing I said I was gonna do. Which I want to apologize for right out the gate. I know I said that I was gonna have the original video done in about a week after I made that initial post. I understand that. I know. And I apologize. I was not able to. And it's my fault. It, it really is. There's no one else to blame other than me. I couldn't find the way I wanted to do it. I didn't ask for help. I tried to be stubborn. I couldn't figure it out on my own. And then I found resources. I googled. I searched. I talked to people. We got ideas. The community came together. And here we are. We finally have our first review up. After so long, we finally got it. We did it, boys. We've made it. <laughs> but you haven't seen it until we get there. Now, I'm going to say straight out the gate, I did record this segment in particular after I've already done the review. So I know already what I'm going to say. So I am going to go give you my warnings. If you're expecting anything involving spoilers, story-based content, um reveals of any of the stories and stuff i do not want to give that this video in particular covers more the mechanics the gameplay character design enemy design um it does lightly touch on the mechanics that are involved in the lore it does lightly cover things that involve the balance or creations um covers enemy design slightly we cover all base mechanics and mechanisms that make the game the game we do less coverage on the story because, again, I want to be as spoiler-free as possible as this is still a I do not want to hide or I do not want to spoil the game for people who want the game still after seeing this review. I don't want to ruin anything about that. I want to avoid that completely. So we lightly touched on the topic of story, but we spent more time looking at game mechanics and the things that make survival horror games survival horror games on top of things that ruin survival horror games from being, well, survival horror games. Now, obviously, I do notice, I did notice a few mistakes in between, a few errors. Um, I, I am aware. I did see them. You're going to see them. Uh, there were some wordage errors there were certain things i didn't say right and there was a misclick you'll see it um <laughs> but i feel like that fits you know me so we kept them in for at least this one time over time once i get better with editing and hiding things like mistakes we'll keep those mistakes there for now but i will say i do hope y'all enjoy and thank you to everybody in the community who threw ideas concepts and general things my direction i do hope you enjoy it to the fullest and without any more waiting i will give y'all the step in the right direction we will begin our first game review on the callisto project if that's what you're waiting for and this is what you're wanting to see i did not speak well of this game and i don't think many others would either so I won't keep y'all waiting any longer. I hope you all be good little noodles, and I hope y'all enjoy the video. Mm, see y'all soon. So, where to begin with this? Where to begin? I guess I could start you all off with the story. I won't spoil anything. This is spoiler free. Um, but I will say, characters, they do not develop. Story hardly develops. Um, there is character creation in like lore books and stuff like that, but you really have to go out of your way in a very intrusive way to continue and even learn the lore, aka you find audio logs and these audio logs you have to sit there in the menus, stare at, listen to for every one of them. Some of these audio logs are three, four minutes long, five minutes at times. So for five minutes, you're stuck staring at a data log screen which is everything that's being read to you by the game. And you sit there and have to stare at it for five minutes, where, as we saw in their other games, you didn't have to deal with that. 
and things like Dead Space. The audio logs played, but you were still able to walk. You had an audio transmission that you could walk around and learn the lore without feeling like it was intrusive in your experience, without it being in the way. Then it was just felt meaningless. And I won't stay on the story topic for too long, especially because, you know, spoiler free, I don't want to give away anything for anybody. Um, most of this gameplay is pretty early on. It's, you know, or it's about midway, but it's mostly mechanics, much less story. So here at this particular point, I had complaints about the enemies already. And this is just a couple of hours in. I had complaints about the way the enemies fought, but it was just bad. Enemies are a very repetitive situation of one, two, three, dodge left, dodge right, dodge left, or right, left, right. It does not matter what direction you dodge, though you may think it is. There is no point in dodging the direction that is given. It, it really does not matter. There is no point in dodging towards the attack or away from the attack. And a dodge is a dodge, which further touches off of the skill ceiling that the game should have. On top of that, the dodge mechanic system is easy. It's very hand-holding. It leaves no room for error. When you see an attack coming, either hold left, hold right. Does not matter whether or not you do it early or you do it midway through. You just can't do it late. Just make sure you are pressing left or you're pressing right. Don't be against a wall that you're dodging against and you dodge the attack. It does not matter. But as long as you dodge, you dodge. Now, there is a perfect dodge system whatever that perfect dodge system may be. Uh, there's an achievement for getting five of them. I did, don't think I even got one. That was it. I don't, I've never used a perfect dodge and I went through this game with the melee weapon only. And we'll get right into that. I'll use that as a segue, fuck it. So I say right here, I say right here at this point that the sword or the melee weapon, whatever the fuck it is that they give you is gonna be broken. And when I mean it's gonna be broken, it's gonna be shattered. It's gonna be the most amazing weapon in the game. And I was fucking right. I was right. And I don't care. I was right. I will say it right here, right now. I was right. You can go back in that VOD and rewatch it yourself. I say specifically that the sword is going to end with the most broken weapon in the game, and it does. I walked all the way from the beginning to the end of this game using damn near nothing but the sword. Only time I used a gun was whenever the gun was forced, because enemies cannot be hit by the melee weapon, or it's the typical I'm a boss, so I'm just going to be not affected by melee weapons. Or... My favorite thing is, well, all the bosses in this game, if you get near them and they touch you, they just one hit you. So don't get near them, kids, because the fucking bosses in this game just one hit you. It does not matter. You are either put into a death animation just by being touched, or you the attack you swear up and down missed took off an arm and you just die. It's pointless. Do not fight the bosses with melee weapons in this. That's the only time you need to use a gun. I say this as somebody who was playing this for 11 hours and hardly was giving a shit at the four hour mark. I, I, I think I leveled up the handgun to max at like the end of the game. I, I, I don't know what else to say about this. I really don't. Just use the sword. And... The very simple dodge mechanic, get the heavy attack. Use the heavy attack to launch things into spikes. The spikes have no limitation. It sends things flying. It buys you time. You can damn near full heal off of sending something flying away. And then just enemy design in this is not favorable to trying to make you not want to use the sword. Enemies in this always 1, 2, 3. Or 1, 2, 3, 4. Sometimes there's an enemy that does a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's it. Dodge, hit, dodge, hit. Or not even dodge, hit. Dodge, 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 hit, hit. Dodge, 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 hit, hit. Dodge, 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 hit, hit. And if you're worried about mutations in this game, because if you've played this game and you're aware that there is a mutation system and you're like, oh, well, the enemies mutate and they do more damage, so you don't want to get hit by them, so shoot them with the gun. Or, well, they have the little tentacles. Shoot the tentacles with the gun and you stop the mutation. It takes like one bullet. Yeah, why waste your time? The mutation enemies follow the same process. One, two, three, four. Congratulations, you dodge one more direction. That's not a new enemy and that's not a good design. I'm gonna come right out the gate. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be mean. I'm gonna be that guy. That is not good design. Congratulations, you created a new enemy, and all that enemy does is go one, two, three, four. Where the enemy before it was going one, two, three. 
Now, occasionally, oh, 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 this mutated enemy can do a five. Watch out. They'll do a fifth attack in which you just dodge the opposite direction of the fourth attack. Oh, my God. I don't know what to do. Oh, what? It's, it's, I hate to mock this game, but I have to. Enemy design isn't good. World design is all right. Weapon balancing was pointless. Yeah, sure. Hey, I can level up my handgun to max and it gets explosive rounds at the cost of five ammo and it pretty much one hits everything that's not a boss. Cool. But also, you know what one hits the enemies? Spike walls. You know what can send them into spike walls? The heavy attack from the melee weapon. Or the grip capability, which I, again, also, I think I leveled up once. I think I leveled up gr the, the stupid little kinetic grip thing, like their little knockoff from the kit, you know, the kinesis kit or telekinesis, whatever the fuck they called it in Dead Space. I think I, I think I put two levels into it total. I, I got like more recharge and uh, more duration. And that was it. Now, pro tip for you guys, if you don't want to deal with any of that, just grab shit when it's close. It costs less energy to grab things that are right in front of you than it does to grab things that are further away, and you can throw them at zero extra cost, essentially. Just throw them into spike walls. I think I threw seven things into one spike wall without re having to use one recharge pack. Because if you just grab them close enough, you can just pick them up and throw them almost instantly. I don't think that was well put together. And then on top of enemy design, right here, we have a blind enemy. Congratulations, we have a blind enemy. You know what that means? It can't see, but it can hear. Oh, it can hear. It can hear when you're walking. Oh, ever, ever been caught walking? Ever been caught in this game walking? Yeah. Ever been caught in this game crouching? Yeah. Ever realized how difficult it was to actually avoid the eyes of the enemies because the sneak system wasn't great? Yeah. Well, here, they just made it easier for you. Don't walk, crouch everywhere, and you can literally sneak past these dudes. But if you don't want to sneak past these dudes and get free backstabs, they follow the same mechanic system of the other enemies. And this is midway through the game. Well over midway in the, through the game. I think this is like maybe the seventh hour in. Well midway through the game. And they follow the same mechanic. One, two, three. And as you can see here, this enemy mutated. And he does the same fucking combo. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Occasionally he'll throw a fourth. Oh no, I broke off his limb. He's only going to do one now. The, taking off limbs... In a, in a Dead Space-like game. Last time I did that, it didn't change shit. They still came at me. I don't have anything to say on that. It, it, it speaks for itself. Anybody who's played a game similar to that. Taking off limbs shouldn't completely remove the enemy's capabilities, especially in a horror game. Because anybody who's sat here and been like, oh, well, I played Resident Evil 4 when you take off their limbs, so except that you can't. But you can take off that fucking head, but you know what happens with that head? They can sometimes get a whole new one, which is even more dangerous than the previous one. They become less dangerous in this one. Way less dangerous. They lose literally 66% of their combos, and that's going because there's three-hit combo. If they have a four-hit combo, congratulations, you took off 75%. I would tell you the math for the five hit combo, but I'm not that smart. I'm a VTuber and a femboy. I don't know math. I'm amazed that I knew 33%. Let's be real. Just be fucking real here. But I have nothing to say. Like, this game is just not great. This game really tried and it really wanted to be something. The world design is really good. It feels like Dead Space game. It feels like it was made by the Dead Space team. The world design, the environment, it feels really good. It feels like it has a horror aspect to it. They have the lighting. They have the odd enemies design. They have things that could be set up for jump scares. They have things set up to make just combat in general difficult. And... They didn't. If you you watch right here, I learned very quickly that if I want to take the advantage here, if you hit an enemy before it pops out the wall, you one hit it. Now, I'm, I'm confident to say that this is probably a bug. 
And if it is, they need to fix it almost immediately because you make these enemies not a threat. Just swing at the wall, takes one hit, and it dies. Sure, you seem to curb stomping it, but it's not alive at that point. It's dead on the ground. Literally right there. You watch me do it perfectly. You watch me do it literally perfectly. And I don't know what to say about that. I really, really don't. It's just poor design. It really felt like they did not take this to a set of gamers who were like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make things difficult. We're going to make things challenging. We're going to really watch out. I hit the second enemy on a backswing, and he fell over in one hit. This is a horror game. Mind you, this has survival horror tags. Now... Even though I'm sitting here trashing on this game, there are a couple things that I do feel need to be incorporated in maybe later games or further installments or even developments of games in general. It's the heal mechanic. The heal mechanic in this game, I low-key wish was in regular Dead Space, was the, if you're healing, you are stuck healing. You are stuck in an animation in which you have to heal and if you do not finish this animation, you do not heal. If you get hit during this animation, you do not heal. Or your healing is cut short. I feel like that should have been in more games. In terms of good that can come from this game, that's all I can give it. Environment design, sure. Enemy design, I was with it, you know, in the first hour. And then at hour two, hour three, hour four, hour five, hour six, out of this 11 hours worth of game, enemies became the same. Boss enemies were just one-hit monsters. Oh, yeah, I don't think I mentioned that. All boss enemies in this game just one-hit you, by the way. If you enjoy actually just being frustrated, just fight these boss enemies. They one-hit you no matter what you do. There's no surviving it. If you got nicked, you died. If you got close, you died. So... Save all of your ammo, use only the melee weapon, and when you run into a boss enemy, just shoot it. With every bullet you have in your arsenal, because it'll die before you run out, or before you need to get more ammo. And then if you're just saving your credits, because you leveled up this fucking melee weapon all the way, which you can see here, because if you've played this game, you can see the little red shocky laser thingy on my, on my little melee weapon there. That means I've maxed it out by this point in the game. Or at least I've maxed out the damage. And that's it. There's no difficulty. If you play this like you do any survival game halfway like any survival game, you just don't have to worry about things. You really don't. And I want to say that it's a good quality or that's a good trait. And I want to say it's a good game or I want to give it more traits and more goodness or more greatness but i can't I, I really really can't there's nothing good that came from this game and other than the peeling and that's it everything else about this game just does not fit it it really doesn't nothing about this game fit anywhere and i wish it did i really do i really really wish it did and i wanted it to don't get me wrong. I wanted to like this game. I paid for the Deluxe Edition. I am still clinging, clinging on to hope of the DLC. And maybe even the Horde mode will bring me back to just get some melee fun. But it wasn't fun. It was not a good game. I did not like it. I played it for 11 hours and it was almost 11 hours of my life I could probably spent playing DayZ solo punching zombies with my fists, playing For Honor, anything else. But I chose this. And for 11 hours, it was cool for the first hour, first two. It just didn't. And I'll avoid going on the full tirade that I can. I do not like to go on the full tirade, and I avoid wanting to do that, at least here on YouTube. I want to give those more in the Discord or on my Twitch channel in general when I am live where I have more time or where I want to spend more time going on this tirade, more time attacking this game. And I don't want to sit y'all through the 
issues I have with the story, the boss enemies, the main enemies, the weapons, the weapon design, the weapon upgrade system, the money system, the dodge system, and the tutorial even has its own issues. The mechanics have its own issues. The fact that all boss enemies or even stalker enemies one hit you. Yeah, the sentry bots you see, they one hit you. No matter what. Somewhere in this VOD, I got stuck up against one of these enemies and like six other enemies at the same time. So I had to literally fight an enemy that is a one hit ranged monster. That no matter what, you cannot avoid its attacks. If it's attacked you with its gun, it hits. On top of six other enemies stacked up against it. And that's it. It's got enemies that remind you of Dark Souls, or Dark Souls, of Dead Space 2. Two and Dead Space 1, sure. It's got the little touch, it's got the little crawly things, it's got the heads that pop out the little sockets, you know, stuff like that. But there's so many things in this game that just do not, they do not fit. And they, I feel like they did not need to be in the game. I really feel like they didn't need to even attempt to be in the game, and they were. And it felt like a big waste to spend resources on mechanics that weren't good or resources on mechanics that weren't even wanting to try to be good. Enemies have unpredictable range. <sighs> Again, I'm going on that tirade. I'm going on my rant, and I want to avoid that. But if I was to sit here and give this game a rate today, if I was to sit there in this chair, not even sitting, standing here wolf ears pointed spider legs tingling give this a rate three that's bad because i got a big game that i want to go after that i rate higher than it and i hated that game put so many hours into it and i hated that game but don't worry that game is on the list of things i want to go after and it will be on the list of things we will go after and i do hope y'all get to see it soon that video in particular will probably be longer because i don't want to waste any more time on callisto protocol than i already have i put 11 hours into it i hated 10 of them i got bored at the third one but i powered through i don't want to waste more time on this game i very very wholesomely sit and wait to see if they do something that brings this game out of the dark into the light and hopefully something new but i will tell you right now if you have paid for this game if you are sitting on this game or if you have not paid for this game i personally do not suggest it i will two out of ten this game all the way i will give it three out of ten two out of ten three somewhere in between there i believe i just said three but i lean on that fence of two to three it's a bad game don't listen to what anybody in journalism online tells you listen to the gamers on this one the game gets repetitive and hopefully we can see something for it later in the future so from there, I will leave y'all be. Y'all don't have to listen to my rant anymore. And I know it definitely felt like a rant. I did not cover every detail I wanted to. But do feel free to ask me. Yourself, in the Discord, even on my Twitch channel. I will give you a full, in-depth, 30-45 minute rant about the game. Just ask. But here... I'm going to sign out on this one. I'm out, of, I'm out of my patience on that. So I hope all of you have a wonderful day. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your days or nights. Or if you're just going to bed, I hope you sleep well. And this was my first shot. I hope you all like it. And I hope we have more to come. Bye-bye, everyone. See y'all soon.